And welcome to the Town Outdoor Show. I'm Charlie. I'm JD. And I'm Grant. JD, you got something in your mouth? Mouth full of peanuts. <laughs> mouth full of peanuts. <laughs> JD right, walks in here and opens him up some of these uh, peanuts that we got out there in the shop and starts pouring them in his Pepsi Zero. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they would have a fit at the Coke Museum I was at this last weekend. <laughs> Oh, you couldn't find Is a Pepsi product anywhere. Well, you couldn't find a Pepsi product anywhere in that whole museum. Being being from Gadsden County, I probably got ancestors uh, rolling over it. Not that my folks were rich enough to own Coca Cola stock, but uh, you know, uh, they probably rolling over in the grave anyway because that was like sinful around the house to not have. Coca-Cola. So is it sacrilege if you put the peanuts yeah. in the Pepsi? I don't know, but it, it's Pepsi pretty doggone. Pepsi zero doggone, sugar. It's, Whoa. it's pretty doggone good, and I kind of <laughs> like it. So I don't really care if y'all like it or not. It's uh, it's all right with Imagine me. Imagine how that would have changed the face of the, the text of country music songs back in the day, you know. Putting <laughs> That's Barbara Mandrell. Peanuts in my Pepsi, Pepsi zero, zero sugar. sugar. <laughs> <laughs> that song would have just All the sucked. songs about... I don't get sugar anymore. No, Jack and <laughs> Pepsi Zero. Yeah, that well, doesn't I'm, seem to I'm work. I'm drinking zero sugar product here too, but it's it's a monster. It's a white monster. That's mm. got to be the most popular monster around. I think it is. Those are the ones I see the most. Yeah, yeah. I remember when the green. Uh, I, I've already told the stories about how they affected <laughs> me the first couple times I drank them. <laughs> You're revving the motorcycle. Um, 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 um. What are I you need- doing that? Are you showing off? No, my hand won't be still. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Ugh. Coming back from so last weekend, um, or last week was spring break for uh, Mariana schools, and um, the we went to well not this last week the week before that. The reason we did two shows in a row. So go ahead. Yeah, and I went. Me and the little kid, well, the the sixteen and the twelve year old kids, and um, and uh, the wife, wife went to. Yeah. To, to, to Ella J. See, I remember this time. I have a hard time remembering the name of that town. Beautiful, beautiful. I mean, I've been through that area before, but never stayed. We stayed. It's a good friend of ours that um, I don't call out names because then they'll be calling them wanting their cabin. And I don't, <laughs> I don't want to go again. <laughs> so, um, so went up there and um, rented a cabin for a week up on the side. I would say on the side of a mountain, but actually they built one on the top of the mountain. And, um, you go in the LJ and you look up there and there's a couple uh, couple cell phone towers way up on a hill and we're like 200 yards from the cell phone towers. And it was beautiful watching the sunrise, which, you know, I don't normally get up and watch the sunrise, but when your window's facing the sunrise <laughs> and... That's kind of like how I got out of bed this morning. We were recording the show on a Wednesday because cause we got a... Uh, the, yeah, the, 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 the skeet, uh, sporting, tra- plays, sporting event. plays tournament. Yeah, this this Friday, so we had interrupted our schedule again. But uh, yeah, the good Lord woke me up at, at uh, six thirty this morning when that thunder, when that lightning hit close to the house, and I jumped about two foot up out <laughs> of bed. And here's your alarm clock. <laughs> I slept through the storm. I don't know, the storm didn't bother me a bit, but that last that last uh, clap of lightning or whatever it was just got me. But anyway, so the sunrise woke you up. Oh yeah, pretty. yeah, but it was beautiful. We went on the. Um, the the Blue Ridge Scenic Railway. They got a mm-hmm. they did that in the eighties and when the the the, the, the railroad uh, shut down and so they converted into some real passenger cars. Some of the passengers' cars actually came from like New Jersey somewhere or something. They converted them and brought them down and man, that was beautiful going there through the uh, along the river there and looking at the. That I hadn't put my Facebook post together yet from the trip, but there's these fish traps, these V's out there in the river with the rocks that have been there since. Native Americans built them? Yeah, yeah. I can they, show uh, you some of those in the Flint River in uh, south of Albany, Georgia. Hmm. Yeah. Well, it was interesting just telling a story. That just, just, it was just pretty. Going there at all the antique shops, which there is now stuff hanging on the walls in the house <laughs> that were, was purchased <laughs> there. <laughs> some, and, uh, Hey, if you get me an antique shop and I find old brass spittoons or I find, you know, old torches. I, I didn't show you, but I got another one of those blow torches that was in there. Still had the original label and stuff on it. Like the one sitting under your TV yesterday mm-hmm. that I saw? I yeah, saw that one. Yeah. I I, we got that one on that I trip. noticed things. You don't, you know. <clears throat> and uh, so, anyway, just it, it, was a, it was a good time. The kids, I mean, you get up there and, you know, you got TV and full internet nowadays, which is new to mountain cabins cabin living but you know what they there was a foosball table out back 
you know. And Mama said foosball was the devil. <laughs> so, but uh, but the kids are out there playing that thing and and just having a good time. And then they found a twister set, and I'm sitting there spinning the thing, laughing my butt off <laughs> with a drink. Um, watching them play. Please Twister. tell me you, you wasn't trying to play Twister with the children because that oh, no, I would not. I would no. I would. I would have. <laughs> I still wouldn't be soul. walking. Um, <laughs> poor little boy got squished. <laughs> and then they're playing darts, and then and then they had this game that I'd seen here, and I think we may have a version of it at the house. And I just read the instructions; it was too complicated. Something about something tacos. You're, you're throwing a taco at each other. You're playing a card game, and it's got this little rubber foam like a dog toy taco. <laughs> and then you put down cards, and then you got duels and wars, and you have to throw and hit somebody with the taco. And now you got the kids chasing each other around the house, throwing <laughs> these foam tacos at each other. And since we're all playing, we, me and my wife are now chasing each other around, throwing you know food <laughs> items at each other. And it's it was fun. I'll tell you what, it was just just sitting there, seeing you know, getting family time like that, and uh, that was cool. That Seen was the bears. Really cool. No, no, I looked. I let my wife drive uh, up and back because I didn't want to drive through Atlanta. And the only thing I have found that's more stressful than driving through Atlanta is letting your wife drive through Atlanta. <laughs> and not that she wasn't driving fine, she's driving fine, but I can't hit the brake. I can't, I can't, I can't do anything. And I'm also not allowed to say anything while she's driving or I get fussed at. I can't tell her not to talk to me when I'm driving. <laughs> yeah. get it, there's a strict rule when we <laughs> when we get about uh you know about 20 miles from the from the was it 285 circle around Atlanta. I just kind of go, all right, radio silence. Y'all be quiet. <laughs> don't talk to me. I'm focused. Don't expect if you do talk to me, don't expect me to answer. God almighty, this, I, I it is that. one of my least favorite places in the world. Well, we went down to the aquarium. Now, I have found, I said, let's go to the aquarium. It's on our side of town. It's closer here. We don't have to go through the middle of Atlanta because I had Googled Atlanta Aquarium. Well, Atlanta Aquarium is actually Atlanta Atlanta Aquarium Supply, and it ain't the Georgia Aquarium, which is, <laughs> you guessed it, downtown. <laughs> so, so I'm going, hey, it's not even that far away, and it's up here. It's up here near Smyrna, so it's close to the Glock factory, and that's not as crowded. Feed. So we head on up there. And, you went to a fish feed store. And we're going, and, and before we got there, I said, let me look at the website and see what the parking looks like. And I'm like, huh, there ain't a lot of parking for <laughs> the aquarium. Big, wait a minute, that doesn't look – oh, man. And, Is that uh, right there at the zoo? Is that right there at the zoo? Uh, uh, it's and next the to – and all near that? Park. Centennial Park and – the, and, and Preston had recommended that I go to the – he said, you going up there? He said, yeah, he goes, you got to go to the Coke Museum. I'm like, oh, no, okay. So, you know, that was pretty cool. I mean, the Coke Museum was cool. Um, the We got finished – the aquarium was awesome. You know, the kids had a blast. Actually, the, we're recording the show today, and, and, and CJ is back up there again on a school trip with my <laughs> wife, chaperoning. Um, the, uh, I bet things seem really familiar. Yeah, yeah. Well, he'll be able, he'll, he'll be able to answer the question they ask when you go into the Coke Museum is what is the oldest artifact in here? And he got it. He was he got the second to oldest one when he raised his hand. That boy's not shy. He read, I, I think it's that plate right there. Well, it wasn't a plate. It was the the syrup dispenser. So that's a spoiler for everybody. And um, but you got to figure out which one it is. And uh, so then we got through there, and that was fun. And I'm like, well, this is that's pretty cool. I mean, it's not to be all end all. I mean, if you're really into Coke, it's fine. But at the end, you get to go through the tasting area, and they got all these machines in there. And so my kids are in there tasting stuff from – there's, like, fruity drinks from South Africa, and there's stuff from Madagascar. I don't know what – that's real. But there's, there's stuff every – you know, you're drinking all these different Coke flavors. around the world. Yeah, that's something like that, and then and all these flavors. And I, I convinced my, my child to, hey, do you know what tab is? Like, no, I've never seen that. I said, oh, this you is need a thing coming up. You got to try this. And <laughs> if you have uh, – yeah. God, I remember that <laughs> oh my stuff. God, what is that? And I, they never sold that. I said, oh, they Ooh, sold it. The That's the original Diet Coke right there. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> I tried it, and I'm it like, oh, my. Terrible. Uh, I couldn't drink that back in the day. We'll be back in just a minute. And we're back. 
talking about tab. Yeah, it was uh, we were going to the break. I mentioned something about the <clears throat> tab, one of America's most popular sodas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And it actually, J.D. said, uh, yeah, it was 2020 when they quit bottling tab. And I don't know who drank it from about the 70s 75 up to 2020. To 2020. Somebody liked it, I guess. I've lived through the 20, to the, to the ninth, uh, up to 99, 20, 2020, that would be 2010, 2000. I've lived through those years, and I, I don't know many people that would drink tab. But it said uh, tab, I looked it up on the Internet. Tab was a diet cola soft drink produced and distributed by the Coca-Cola Company, introduced in 1963 and discontinued in 2020. The company's first diet drink, Tab, was popular among some people throughout the 1960s and 70s as an alternative to Coca-Cola. I don't know who those some people are, but those some people. I can remember my mama <laughs> drinking it. Now, you know, you, you're a kid and you see mom and daddy drinking something, you're going to go up there and, you know. Here, yeah. can I have some of that? Yeah, sure. <laughs> so, so growing up, you know, we had we had meat plants, you know, meat processing plants, you know, packing houses, whatever. And 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 I remember my papa used to maintain the drink machine, and it's one of those kind where you put the coin in and you reach in and you pull the bottle oh, out, yeah. and the little door opens up and it lets one bottle mm-hmm. out, and the next one rolls down. And my job was to refill it. And had those wooden crates with the save the bottles and trade the bottles back yeah. in. Yeah, you put nickel. the bottle back in there and then put them back in the stack. And then you know when it needed refilling, you put it. And yeah, man, you talking about keeping the drinks cold? Oh, oh man, those things were cold. There'd be ice on frost in them sometimes. I mean, they were so cold. But Tab was never a big mover. But every now and then, when everything we'd else be was out empty. of everything else, and it'd be like well, I choking wanna, that stuff down. Probably well, gonna have a drink. You can. Uh, Oh, there's nothing in here but tab. Well, and you'd pop the cap on that thing and drink it, and most of the time it got poured down the, <laughs> down the sink or outside the front door. I couldn't let them see me wasting it, but, oh, that was nasty. Yeah, You know, I think about it as much water as, you know, I try to drink now. Uh, drinking, a, drinking a soda right now, that's that's way out of the norm for me. I probably don't drink three, three sodas a, or three Cokes or whatever you want to call it a week. Mm-hmm. Uh, I drink the monsters in the morning, but I drink a lot of water now. And uh, back then, you never drank tap water. If you if you drank anything at all, it was out of a water hose. Mm-hmm. You know, when we was kids growing up, you're outside playing, and you're thirsty. You get you yeah. grab the water hose, and but yeah, you drank sweet tea and sweet tea. And if you was real lucky, you might have a Coca Cola, but lemonade, something like that. Oh yeah, Kool Aid. Kool Aid. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> golly! Uh, uh, <clears throat> some oh, red, yeah. some red drink, some red. Well, Kool-Aid. back then, Kool Aid was coming. It came in the big packet. You know, it makes two quarts, and then the big packet, yeah. and it had the sugar and the Kool Aid in it. You just poured it in there and stirred it up. But if you had to get the the, the off the brand, little, the, little, the little, little envelopes, the little ones. I remember Kool Aid and the little envelopes where where you put your own house you sugar. You put in your there. sugar in there, right? Trying to get that stuff to dissolve, and it was yeah, it was syrup. <laughs> yeah, it's. <laughs> Man, the things that the things that if this phone doesn't quit drinking, that's probably that fellow wanting to fix our website again. Yeah. Uh, whatever his name was. Ramesh. <laughs> yeah, Ramesh. He's gonna. He got a solution in mind. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I trust him to fix it before I trust some Bob, boy. Uh, Bob from. Yeah, or Bubba or Paul. Hey. Bob from Bainbridge. Yeah. <laughs> hey, this is this is Bob from Computer Solutions Incorporated. We. Won't, we we can fix your website for you right there. I noticed I was clicking through that thing, and you got us kind of like old Jeff Fox, where they're talking about nope. the brain surgeon, redneck state brain surgeon. <laughs> you know, what we're going to do now is we're going to cut the top of the skull right off, and we'll get a root around in there with a stick till we find what the problem is, and we're going to put it back together. No, you're not. No, <laughs> no you ain't. No, you better learn how to, you better have to, learn how to speak proper English. Ugh. Well, oh, yeah. I, I'll tell you there uh, to completely change the subject, but I got something on my mind. And I want to think. I want to talk about it before we uh, before uh, we delve off into any further adventures. But have you been paying attention to any of the financial world stuff going on right now, specifically gun related financial world? Have you been paying attention to anything going on? Uh, let's go with no. Okay, I think I might have. <clears throat> so, I think we've kind of touched on it before, as far as ammunition is concerned. The the the, the big holding company called Vista Outdoors that mm-hmm. owns Federal and Remington. Huge. Okay. So huge. The other so the other two, there's basically four big players 
in the in the ammunition business worldwide. Mm-hmm. Four big players and then a few smaller ones, like uh, the the Fiocchi is one of the really big ones, mm-hmm. uh, big international company. Um, Federal and Remington are now the same company owned by Vista Outdoors, and then Olin, which is Winchester, is is, is the number four, which they're actually probably the biggest. So <clears throat> Vista Group, acquired Remington ammunition when Remington got broke up with the, the their second or third, whatever it was, bankruptcy. Mm-hmm. So that put Federal and Remington probably bigger or as big than Winchester. Well, now the guy that owns Fiocchi is a Czechoslovakian, 30-something-year-old Czechoslovakian billionaire that, bought, that owns 70% of the Fiocchi stock, was trying to buy Vista outdoors so that one guy would have controlled fiocchi federal remington cci spear the, those those big name ammo companies start getting some antitrust <clears throat> issues there. and he he is a he's he's czechoslovakian or whatever they call the czech republic the czech he's a czech no offense but i don't want a european anybody other than americans owning american manufacturing companies so apparently the Congress or somebody got involved in it and threw the red flag up saying, we ought not let this fellow buy this thing. And he offer, was offering like, I don't know, $35 a share, and right now it's trading at thirty two fifty or something. And uh, <clears throat> so the red flag got thrown, and he kind of got – the Congress basically started – was Congress got involved and was putting the purchase off, wasn't, wasn't, was not approving – Federal Trade Commission wasn't, wasn't approving the purchase – so he kind of backed out, and he turned around and bought Sellier and Bello out of which is a, a Serbian company. Mm-hmm. He tried and bought that ammo company. Well, so all of a sudden, a company I think they're it's uh, M M N C I think that's right or N M C it's initials uh, some some capital fund out of believe it or not Canada. Has now made an offer at thirty-seven fifty, thirty-seven dollars and fifty cent a share, which is this. We're talking about a three and a half billion dollar cash deal. So now they're trying to sell it to a Canadian company. And folks, if you're not paying attention to this, it's terrifying <clears throat> to to me anyway. And uh, so I got to do a little further research. Guess who the guess who owns thirty percent of Vista Group right now? Vista Outdoors is 30% of that company is owned by Vanguard or 20% is owned by Vanguard, two different Vanguard uh, trust mutual funds. And the third one is BlackRock. And if you're not familiar with BlackRock folks, you need to be familiar with BlackRock. That's these guys big, are not good guys. They're not good guys at all. They're, they do not have the best interest of gun owners and uh, freedom loving Americans in, in, uh, in, in 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 their mind, this is a big DEI, uh, big DEI investment company, and so they currently own ten percent of Vista Outdoors, and they own twenty percent of Olin, which is Winchester. So you got these big financial groups. And Vanguard also owns. So Vanguard is not much better, a little bit better than than BlackRock, but not dramatically better as far as their political leaning. So now you've got <clears throat> essentially thirty percent. Of two, the two big American ammo companies are owned by by mutual funds that are controlled by anti-gun, uh, anti-freedom. Let's just not call them not even anti-gun companies or anti-anti-gun financial companies. We're, let's call them anti-freedom financial groups that currently own thirty percent, and they're trying to sell to this Canadian company. And I haven't, I didn't get a chance this morning to research them to see what they're all about. But being Canadian, there's a pretty high probability they're going to be uh, very uh, anti-freedom, socialist-leaning, uh, yeah, <laughs> same thing. I, I don't know how – I mean, yeah, I, I, that sucks, but it's, it's a global economy now. And so money flows both ways. And what – initially the shock I see from something like that is – yeah, they, these are woke companies going to call, going to buy all of this stuff out and then shut down our freedoms. But at the same time, these people are capitalists too. You buy, I, I you buy ammo company, yep. quit making ammo. You you just gave away I, I all your money. I don't disagree with you, 
I don't disagree with you there on the face of it. And mm-hmm. that's, the, 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 you know, it, it didn't scare me yesterday because I didn't know. I wasn't paying attention to who actually owns the controlling shares of these companies. It didn't scare me yesterday because I didn't know about it. Today, now that I know about it, it's kind of terrifying because you are giving control over to, and, and you know and I know that the government has been doing everything they can to try to put the gun industry out of business through financial, through bank regulation, oh, yeah. through through. Yeah, we've had to change legislation our processing that, companies for credit cards right. and so banks they, they've and everything attacked else. us in every fashion possible through legislation against owning certain things or through legislation about the financial institute that do that does business with gun companies. I don't know. I'm I'm pretty sure that the that the certain certain segment of our government probably has a lot to do with these these big mutual funds uh, where they do business with. So it, it to me, it's almost like they're taking another end around to try to get control of um, control of our freedom. Is what it boils down to in my mind. So that's kind of the way I'm looking at it, Charlie. And I, and I get what you're saying. Yeah, if 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 capitalistic uh, companies completely um, if they allow represent that, their shareholders correctly, which they should, right? They don't do things to. But BlackRock has been famous for not representing. But BlackRock has been famous specifically for for going against uh, what you would think would be sound business to make a point on the political correctness yeah. side. Well, when of you things. have that much money your principles tend to matter more to you than the money does. When you get past that point where you've got so much, yeah. which is why the Levi's and the different right. group companies have gone, you know, Ben and Jerry's and all that. We'll be back in just a minute. And we're back. So <laughs> I was looking at the news and so uh, the Fox headline and all the other networks says, politically incorrect sheriff tells citizens to shoot to kill home invaders to save taxpayers money. And I'm like, I'm like, this guy, where's he at? Sounds and like it ends a- up. And, and, and I said, it's got to be a Florida sheriff. Oh, yeah. And uh, lo and behold, it is. It's actually Santa Rosa County. See, my and, first uh, thought was Grady Judd down in Polk. Well, yeah. Here's the thing: is, and I was talking to. Um, he's the leader of the. Cl- he's the leader of that that club. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. and I, I was talking. Uh, JD and I were talking to uh, Sheriff Donnie Edenfield in Jackson County yesterday. We were getting or, or Tuesday. We were getting set up for this uh, sporting plays event, and he came by, and and uh, we were talking, and we, I, you know, I'd mentioned there was he'd caught some flack from some. Uh, Facebook trolls about you know putting stuff out on social media and doing press releases and doing you know weekend sit downs with the sheriff doing basically so people in the community can see the sheriff see the sheriff's face talk to the sh- you know hear things directly from the sheriff everybody in the state of Florida uh, that are sheriffs pretty much doing this kind of thing they all have the social media programs and it's in an effort to do community outreach the sheriff can only be so many places at once he can only talk to so many people back in the day growing up you know, back in Jackson County, Johnny Mac, the sheriff, um, uh, he would go to Pokey's Caravan and sit down and have coffee in the morning, and he would have his cabal of people come in and talk to him, and, you know, that's just part of it. And, you know, that's how you did things back mm-hmm. then. And he was a very popular sheriff, you know, and he, he uh, was a man of those times, and now things are different. And if the sheriff just shut down and hid in the ivory tower up at the sheriff's course, it's Marianne, it's not an ivory. It might, maybe the new one will be, but this one's not. It's an, it's scary. Um, they're in a, Michael did a number on the county, but anyway. Uh, so yeah, it's you know, way more people they're now. Doing, they're doing <clears throat> that. Yeah, they're being seen. And so, and then the the next day, I see this article, and uh, Sheriff Bob Johnson out of Santa Rosa County basically did a press release, and he said um, it was way back in April of 2022. It was a year ago. He said, if someone is breaking into your house, you're more than welcome to shoot. We prefer you do that, actually. The comments have gone viral again in juxtaposition to – actually That's read a that big word. word. To a sto- <laughs> I'm reading it. To a story in New York where a woman was arrested for trying to move squatters from her property. Wow. Well, he said he wasn't talking about squatters. That's a different – He's talking about set. burglars. He's talking about burglars. And he robbers. Said, and his response that uh, I said, if you shoot accurately and you kill the guy – you save taxpayers money. And I also said that if somebody gets killed during a home invasion, the odds of them reoffending are zero. And we like those odds, which we do. 
No, you know. no lies detected here. <laughs> and in Santa Rosa County, we have a very high percentage of the population that have weapons, and I promote the use of them if you're in your house. And if someone kicks in your door because they're not, they're not coming in to give you a hug or give you cookies, they're coming in to commit felonies. And so <clears throat> I like that. Now, that's the Santa Rosa Sheriff, Sheriff Johnson. He would be a Johnson, wouldn't he? He would. Probably yeah. some of my kinfolk. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> I had to look that up. But, you know, through South Alabama, North Florida, South Georgia, you've got very pro-Second Amendment sheriffs, constitutionally elected officers. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Even here where we're recording in Gadsden County, the sheriff here um, – promotes that idea he's been in we've done some training for him and he heard said, him say it and he said if somebody comes in your house and you have to shoot them that's terrible but it's what i expect you to do and i fully support your right to do it yeah, yeah. i mean and I, he had seminars here with us working with him hand in hand talking to the public after there was a similar incident like that and that's so i'm in mean, jackson county the sheriff's teaching you know it's been teaching for Years and years before, when he was still a probation officer back in the day, but way before he got elected sheriff, or probably entertained the idea, he was out teaching firearms classes at churches yeah. and everything else, and still still does it through the agency today. So people, well, if they're being, if if sheriffs are being honest with the public, um, the the first first line of defense is the the victim. If the victim can fight back, there's a yeah. much higher probability of survival as opposed to calling 911 and hiding in a closet. It's now, just you, fact. You clearly have the right to defend yourself. Now, you also have a responsibility to do it safely. I just saw another news report where a woman was fumbling in her purse to get her keys and touched the trigger on her pistol, and it went off and killed her teenage daughter who was standing next to her, and that's irresponsible. Yeah. And so you have a responsibility to do it correctly. We'll be back. So, uh, going back to what we were talking about. Yeah, the, my, my point of that whole thing that I brought up about this is that, that Czechoslovakian fellow ain't looking all that bad. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know his political leanings, but I, I got a feeling he's doing what he's doing. And that, so, he got rich by being so a capitalist. He, he, he owns CZ, uh, which I ain't going to begin to pronounce. So, he owns the CZ well, the gun sense, manufacturer. Since they're a Czech right. based. Czech-based gun manufacturer. Gun manufacturer. Yep. He owns he owns CZ. He owns now he owns Colt. CZ bought Colt, so the American brand of of, of uh, AR-15s and revolvers and, and semi-automatic uh, 1911s. The, the the traditional from the 1800s is owned by by the Czechs now. So he owns he owns CZ and Colt. And now Fiocchi ammo. So I don't know that I'm all that opposed to him actually owning where I originally was going, yeah, I don't really like the idea of a, of a foreign entity owning. But I, dang, if I don't think I'd rather have that guy own it because at least he's a gun and ammo manufacturer, he's probably right. doing it for the money. He got to be a billionaire, a 30-something-year-old billionaire for a reason. And uh, I don't even sure that I'm, I'm, I'm kind of pulling for him to get back in the game now and <laughs> And by the by, federal in uh, Remington because so, I don't think I think he's getting in the business to make bullets, make ammunition for the commercial market. And uh, well, you know, if he look if he if he were to sell off some of his other holdings and then buy out Vista, then he wouldn't have the antitrust issues, and he'd probably make more money that way. But uh, I'm with you. I, I do believe in antitrust laws. Is that she, somebody shouldn't be able to dominate the entirety of an industry, you know, because that gives all of the control. Then he, then he can set the price at whatever. He, that's why right. you have that, so right. you don't have AT and T setting the price for all right. phone stuff. Although know. these 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 the way it's done now, there's such a small group that probably do uh, work together. To set some of which that is stuff. precisely what BlackRock and Vanguard are. It's a mm. small group of investors that own these companies, and those guys get to call the shots. And that's that's you look at there. If you dig deep enough on it, you can see who actually uh, has the most shares of of BlackRock and Vanguard or whatever. Mm -hmm. You got these, these. It's a small group that owns most of it, and then the rest of us that dabble in the in the market or have mutual funds in your 401k or whatever you're you're a you're you're a minor player 
you yeah, know, and that I, stuff. I also look at I look at <clears throat> I look a lot of, I look at a lot of liberals and people who invest money as liberals, and except for the very very wealthiest stuff, most of them are very hypocritical in their and they 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 believe in something until it comes out of their back pocket, and then mm-hmm. all of a sudden they don't believe it anymore. You know, they and they're willing to well, say one thing and do another. And a lot of your conservatives are are more they they. They believe in what they believe in and are willing to make sacrifices, financial or otherwise, for it. Um, you know, I wouldn't say that's exclusive on either side, but I've I've seen I've seen some of that to where, you know. It, but once you get above a certain level of being super filthy rich, then you can do what you want to with your money, and and they'll they'll make so much money that they just start giving it away. Yeah. You know, that's that's a, uh, you know, well getting. Where I'm getting a divorce, and we're just going to me and my wife are just going to split. We're going to keep enough to, and then we're just going to start giving away to all our charitable causes, and they fund certain causes that you know. But th- but that's a small number of people. Yeah, that's the yeah. one percent of the one percent. Yeah, or those, those are <laughs> those are the Bezoses and the 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 you know. Of course, you got Musk. I like Musk. I mean, he's he, he's he's weird. <laughs> And I wouldn't agree with everything he says. Don't say that. It'll shut the shuttle, so shut the satellite feed I off. Have, on I don't have internet at the house. <laughs> but the thing is, is I like I like him. I'm willing to forgive a few of his opinions just based on the fact that he's willing to tell everybody to. <laughs> I'm gonna do what I want to do. F off. I mean, he's done that. He goes, you know, if you don't like it, you know what, you know. And I, I forget the quote. He was, you know what, just. F off or something like that. If you don't like this, just do. Well, you you sure you want to do that with your investors? You know yeah. what? I don't care. You know I, that to me, mm. you know, dude, that's cool. <laughs> I like that. I like. Well, it's no different. Yeah. Me, somebody comes in here in the store, and me and you, you know, we're you know we we you know we we make things happen. We we make ends meet. I mean, we're we're in business. We have to depend on what people's opinions of us are and everything else, and we hate. Bad reviews. We try to keep, you know, keep, but every now and then somebody walks in and we're like, you know what? If if we got to have that kind of person's business to keep us in business, we've just set, put this down <laughs> and go home. We have business. been told, tell him, don't come back. Yeah. And there's somebody out there probably listening that's had had that conversation with us. And hey, if you ain't gonna be, if you ain't gonna do right, don't come back. Yeah. And we're willing to say that. Yeah. You know, you you come out here and endanger or or treat our people rudely or. <laughs> You can come out here and be rude to us if you want to, and we'll put you in your place. But if our employees don't, don't you know, they're trying to be good employees. You come out here and you mistreat them. Yeah, don't <laughs> guess, come guess, back. Don't call and complain to us telling you lies when you're on videotape doing something else. Yeah. <laughs> well, he did so-and-so. No, <laughs> no, 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 he, he didn't. No, he didn't because I just watched the video. <laughs> yeah, and now we have audio. You know, it's don't think that we don't run a tight ship around here you know we're good old boys but you don't get our don't get on the fighting side of us <laughs> like yeah Wilson. i just I, I you know i i don't always understand people i guess i just it's it just some of the things that uh some of the things that happen you just have to and it's worldwide you just kind of shake your head and go what, what what is the end what is the end game what were they thinking you know why why did why did it go to that why <laughs> How did it? How did we get here? That happens in a, on a daily basis. So. Well, we we end up. I, we we have a hard time with the people, and I, it's just a certain subset of people, and, and we can't use the n word out here. But narcissism is a problem. And <laughs> you should what? seen JD's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did you look at me like that for? <laughs> So we get people out here, and narcissism is personality qualities include, oh, I get it. I'm sorry. I didn't mean. So personality qualities include thinking very highly of oneself, needing admiration, believing others are inferior, and lacking empathy for others. And you get those kinds of people that come out. And in the gun world, you know, is you know, hey, I'm cool, whatever. But those people that just they don't care about the people around them they think that they're to be all end all and they walk in here and they don't get treated exactly the way you know I'm, i can break the rules because i'm special yeah i don't have to abide by the rules even though it's posted on a sign above my head or even though i did i read i watched the video and i took the test and i know the rules i'm gonna do whatever i want because you know i'm a narcissist and so that's 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 a 
I just you identify those people and it, and it's tough. Sometimes you don't realize that's who you're dealing with. But uh, anyway. Such is life. We got a uh, – so today is Saturday, the 20 uh, – whatever. The, what is the date this Saturday? 30th. I'm sorry. The 30th. There's a, a big SIG match going on at the range. If you listen to this at 10 o'clock, you got time to get out here. SIG is oh, bringing yeah. a bunch of yeah. – uh, SIG is bringing out a bunch of uh, their guns, and they're going to let you – let people try them out uh, on them. I think they're providing the ammo, or maybe you have to buy the ammo from them at a reasonable price and – uh, I'm not sure exactly how they're doing the demos or if they're providing the ammo kind of thing. for, But I know they want to shoot their ammo and their gun. So I don't know if they're giving you the ammo or letting you buy the ammo from them really cheap. Well, if they're letting you try the gun, they ought to be letting you try their ammo too. But <laughs> Yeah. I, like I said, I ain't sure about that part if you got to pay for the ammo to shoot their guns. But I know they're bringing pretty much all of what they make out here and letting it, while the competition's going on. Yeah. And uh, there is a competition that you can enter and – uh, shoot your SIG, or you can shoot another manufactured gun. You're just not eligible to win prizes, and they're going to be giving away guns and all that good stuff. So there'll be a. It's only taken up like three of our bays, so don't panic if you want to come use the range. Otherwise, there'll still be plenty of place for you to shoot. Uh, but you're supposed to have beautiful weather uh, starting. If you if you come out and you haven't shot a 365 before, I highly encourage you to shoot one. That's yeah. a cool little pistol, and it's a small compact pistol with decent capacity. I like them. Yep. Um, they, Their 1911s are, are awesome, too. Yeah, they are. They Their 1911s are, are. are very yep. good. I've got a 1911, a SIG 1911 in 9mm that I absolutely love. Hmm. You know, well, you get arthritis when you get our age. Start getting arthritis in your hands and heavy recoiling guns just uh, gets well, painful. I asked, my, I asked my wife, I said, <laughs> uh, you, you are carrying gun nowadays, aren't you? She goes, yeah. So what, you're carrying your 19 or your 1911? I'm carrying my 1911. I'm like, oh, good for you, baby. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. We got Paul. Yeah, we got Paul on the He's we got our, Paul on the phone. He's out yeah. on the beautiful Lake Seminole. He has weathered the storm and managed to go fishing. Hey, Paul. Yes, sir. What's up? Hey, guys. How y'all doing? Good, buddy. I tell you what, um, it, it was a storm this morning, uh, but uh, we're out here fishing around some plants where they've been bedding. JD and we've caught five this morning. We're looking to catch some big ones. Been a little slow the last few days. We. We had, uh, we caught over like 50 bass in the last three days. It's, the, the bites have been really good. Yeah, it's, uh, that, that, we're, so we're recording the show on, uh, Wednesday, uh, to air on this Saturday. So we're a couple, couple days early on recording the show, but, uh, we had a heck of a thunderstorm, uh, front or whatever it was come through last night. I'm sure it got the water all churned up and added some more mud to the, to the, <laughs> added some more muddy conditions to the water too. So. I noticed yeah, the Oak yeah, was full this morning. Yeah, Spring Creek is finally starting to clear up. I don't know if we've got enough to really get a bunch more dirty water coming back down, but it's finally starting to clear up over here, and you can actually see the bottom and, you know, three and four foot of water in certain areas. The flint's starting to clean up some, too. You know, it's got real muddy, the flint and the hooch. That's starting to gradually clean up, you know, starting to, it's just a heavy stain now. Man, but the, the body's been... Really good. Now we got one right here. Oh, <laughs> Holy. Anyway, so, but the, the bike's been, uh, let me fix that for you, buddy. Oh, I saw it right back over there. I was just digging. Anyway, they, uh, they're starting to bite, Jamie. <laughs> what, what'd you just catch, or what'd your client catch? It was a bass. He just brought it by a little bright spot over there, and I think it was one on the bed. Yeah, this time of year, for folks that are listening for, when you're throwing a worm, you want to fish it very slow. Because if it's moving by fast and they're around the nest, they're not going to swim over there and get it because they're really not thinking about eating right now. They're just going to think about protecting. So you got to fish it very slow so they'll pick it up. So I went out I went out bass fishing this past uh, Saturday with my wife and uh, up on Lake Ammonia and I was fishing in a spot where I, I know fish bed and I, uh, I threw a – I was throwing this crawfish-looking 
creature bait, you know. And uh, it's a lot of times the bass on the bed will get after stuff like that. And I, I had to make a really, really long cast to get it in there because there was so much vegetation between the boat run and the uh, where I was trying to get to. I couldn't really get the boat any closer. So I made this big, long cast. That bait hit the water, and it, Paul, it looked like a redfish coming through there pushing pushing water, you know, that bulldozer under the water. And I'm like, oh, it's something good coming to get that thing. And all of a sudden, I mean, it looked like you just, you know, took a stuck a blender over there in the water. And I mean, water went everywhere. Fish goes and just makes a big swirl around. I never felt the fish. I don't think the fish ever picked the bait up. And I'm going, that fish has got to be on it. And I'm trying to feel it and trying to never, never touch that bait. I think it just came in there and hit at it with its tail or something and knocked it off the uh, knocked it off the bed and I kept throwing back up in there and never could get the same reaction again. I ended up catching a few a uh, few bass, but uh, yeah, it's like you said, they're not when you're you're trying to make that this time of year you're trying to make that fish mad enough to defend its bed by eating whatever it is you're you're throwing at them and uh sometimes you're just trying to make them angry enough to bite it as opposed to them trying to feed and and uh That's and right. eat it so. You know, you, we, we're starting to see some, some bass garden fry now, and that's the, kind of the same thing. You, you'll see a little fry nibbling in the water, or nip, you know what I mean, just barely jumping out of the water, and usually those those four to five, six-pound bass will be hanging around the fry protecting them. Yep. And then when you feed your bait, they'll, they'll react to it, they'll hit it that way too. But, you know, after after two or three weeks of them garden fry, then they start eating their fry. That's <laughs> when the fishing really gets good on the on the back end of the spawn. Yeah, they start <laughs> eating their start eating their own young, and that's uh, that happens in the fish world for sure. Yeah, that's right. That's right. All right, man. We'll uh, tell folks how they can get a hold of you if they want to go fishing. We can catch one of them big largemouth. Oh yes, sir. We uh, I, just now I got some. I got a, I got three or four days left open in uh, um, in April. Just let people know. But man, give me a call at eight five zero two six four seven five three four. You can reach me on. Uh, Facebook at Captain C A P T period Paul Tire Fishing, and uh, let's go fishing, man! It's that time of year to talk with a bite. Let's start having any day. All right, buddy. We well, y'all have fun. Be careful out there. We'll see you next week. All right, see y'all next week. God right. bless weekend. All right, you too. Bye. Man, we were up in uh, uh, Copper Hill, Tennessee, the other day on that trip. I was talking mm-hmm. about with the family. We got on that train. We rode up there in this little town up there. It's the Tennessee. Georgia line runs right mm-hmm. downtown. You just walk across the street and you're in another state, which is pretty cool. And uh, we were walking around, and my, CJ's hair looked like a mop. I mean, it just was everywhere. And I looked over. We were going in an antique store, and I looked over, and there's this, talking about antiques, there's a, a Copper City Barber Shop. I'm Alan Cox, and there's this one barber in there, and he's like our generation, and he's standing in there just leaning against the wall watching the tourist walk by. And uh, I looked at CJ and I said, come here, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you need goes, a haircut. What? I said, you getting a haircut. I said, you've been saying you want a haircut. He goes, yeah, when we get home, I want to get my haircut. I said, I ah, ain't going home. You going into one of the last bona fide barbershops. And I, <laughs> we walked in there and, and – uh, and I, no said, hey, how long? I said, we got about 30 minutes to catch this train out of town. Can you cut his hair? He goes, yeah, I, I think I can do that. He goes, you know, my clientele are all locals. He said, when the train comes in, it just – town gets crowded and people walk by. And I said, yeah, well, you know. <laughs> this, boy, wanna... this boy got a mop on his head. He needs to trim. And there's the picture of him in a, bar, a bona fide barber's chair <laughs> and uh, getting his hair cut by a bar. He did not want to do it. He, he's used to those little, you know, super cuts and all this kind of stuff, whatever it is. <laughs> and uh, he's used to saying what he wants. So this is the one where you point to the picture on the wall and go, on. Oh. I want that, and I said, I, I said he wants that one, but he doesn't want the lines cut in the side like with the razor. You know how to do the little. And he goes, "Yeah, I don't do that. I don't here. do that no way. So I don't do that good, here because you ain't getting that." <laughs> and uh, I mean, it was like twenty dollars with a tip, you know. <laughs> and um, and then I went into the hometown proud IGA. Uh uh-uh. uh They had a bona fide uh, IGA. I, an IGA. Uh, look at there. All right, a real IGA. And then inside That's a grocery the IGA, store for those of y'all that don't know. Look at that. Don't that bring back memories? Man. Three checkout lines. There's old Charlene sitting right there with the red vest <laughs> on. <that. laughs> I said, honey, we got to go in here. We got to go in here and take a look. I just want to see if this place smells like I think it's going to smell. And um, we went in there, and we just walked in the door, and I just stood there for a minute, and I went, 
<laughs> going back that's, in time. That's a, that's the IGA right there for you, and it, it's three three checkout lines, old fashioned. I'm surprised they got the little scanners, and um, <laughs> it's uh, and it's it's small, but they got everything you need in there. And it reminds me, there's a grocery outlet in Mariana, which is like the IGA, mm-hmm. and you go in there, and it's that stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's that yeah. has that same feel, that same smell, the same experience, and you know, you really ought to just go shop in one of these places every once in a while. Go to small town, yeah, independent grocers and stuff, and just just Man, live that's... that experience a little bit. Now, don't get me wrong; I'm all I'm a buy one get one Publix guy. I mean, <laughs> but every now and then you got to go back to just home plate because they still exist. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's neat. I yeah, you know, growing up in Chattahoochee, the Bradley's IGA was a Mr. Joe was a fixture in town there, and you know, son Tom worked there mm-hmm. and ran the store after Mr. Joe retired. And you knew every cashier by first name, and you pretty much always knew everybody in the store when you went in there. You knew the the guy running the butcher shop, and you knew, you know, it's just then mm-hmm. there's nothing there's nothing that can replace that. Uh, and it's it's sad that you know that you you just don't see it that often anymore. It's uh, kind of a time gone by, and. You know, I don't know the name of anybody that works at the Publix or the Walmart unless it's one of the kids that my kid, kids go to school with. Kid. Hey, you, know? you go to the Publix checkout mm-hmm. around this Tallahassee and they go, hey, uh, aren't you so-and-so? Yeah, yeah, you know, you know my dad, he worked with the sheriff's officer, at the mm-hmm. you know, whatever, and he's so-and-so. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, that's the thing. Cops get their kids jobs at Publix or get yeah. them to go get a job at Publix. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's a good, nice place to work, whatever. But, uh, but you know, now it's – Dollar generals and family dollars, and it, uh, what scares me is that Family Dollar, and you know, they got a distribution warehouse in my hometown of Mariana. Well, they just announced they're shutting down like a thousand or fifteen hundred locations around the country, um, downsizing, mm. and that's that's a good percentage, like twenty percent or something like that, of their company. Because Dollar General's taking over the world. Dollar, I'm surprised <laughs> every Family Dollar doesn't have two Dollar Generals in the parking lot. <laughs> I mean, I navigate by Dollar Generals. I mean, how do you, where do you, where do you, turn, to go, and take where do you turn to go to the Dothan Gun Range? Well, you go out past the Publix outside, past the hospital, past the Publix on 84, and then turn right by the Dollar General. There is literally a Dollar General. I know because one of the water hoses we use at the range, and every now and then it came from, you know. Not to them, be confused with a Dollar General right up the road or going the other direction. No, I mean, you go you go to the third Dollar General and take a lift. You know, that's a that's, uh, – yeah, and that's that's the there's just so I don't know how they do it, you know I, I have no idea. And now Family Dollar is they've got the the Dollar Tree or something, mm-hmm. and the Family Dollar combined. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're they're closing a a whole bunch of a bunch of that, which is not 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 good for small communities because there's a lot of communities that that's what. Yeah, so you that's know. your option. Yeah. <laughs> Not plural. I, I, I go to Dollar General every now and then. They just need to learn to put stuff on the shelf, not leave it sitting around in boxes everywhere. You trip over that stuff. We'll see y'all next week. Bye.